What's good everybody, this is CP and welcome to a very special video. Today, let's talk about the latest rumors and speculations for the Vancouver Canucks. And I just want to keep everyone up to date on the latest Vancouver Canucks related rumors and speculations. Uh, recently, sports analyst Rick Dollywall went on the Sakaris and Price show and discussed a few interesting topics regarding the Vancouver Canucks. He speculated on a few potential players the Canucks could target along with future roster moves and contract speculations. Obviously, these are just rumors and speculations at this point, but it's always fun to keep Canuck fans in the loop and discuss potential big signings and trades. So here we go. So on the show, Dollywall said, I was told this morning the Canucks are poking around on Evan Rodriguez. I also believe in my heart the Canucks are still in the mix to land UFA D-man Calvin Dehan. That could be in relation to Tucker Pullman's health, I'm not so sure. So to me that's a very very interesting take from Dollywall and I feel like both players could definitely help improve the Canucks in different areas. First I would like to take a look at Evan Rodriguez. Now in my opinion he is one of the better free agents somehow still available right now out there. And to be honest I'm quite surprised that he went this long unsigned as he scored 19 goals and 24 assists for the Pittsburgh Penguins last year. He also averaged around 16 minutes a night and contributed on special teams. If brought in, I feel like Rodriguez would give the Canucks offense another dimension in their forward group as he would probably solidify the top three lines and he's also a very versatile forward that could be moved around, maybe somewhere in the top six or the top nine. And the way I see it, if he's paired with the right player or put in the right situation, I think he could give you around 15 to 19 goals and maybe around 35 to 40 points again. So overall, I think the Canucks would definitely welcome a player like Rodriguez with open arms. In terms of the money, uh, Rodriguez is finishing off a one-year, $1 million contract for the Pittsburgh Penguins. So in many ways, he definitely outplayed his contract last year. But I must also mention that he is 29 years old and is coming off a major career year. So if money is his main motivation, I wouldn't be surprised to see him try to ask for a big contract to secure the bag. However, the one advantage the Canucks have is that it's getting late in the offseason. And as we get closer to the opening night in October, I feel like that's less leverage for Rodriguez, especially if he wants to get that big contract he might have been hoping for earlier in the offseason. Yeah, so maybe Patrick Alvin can use that to his advantage and get Rodriguez on a discount or a one-year bridge deal to improve his roster. So my question to you Canuck fans is, do you think Alvin should target Rodriguez? And do you think adding him could help the Canucks roster overall? If so, how much would you pay him and what term would it be? Let me know in the comments below. Moving on, Calvin DeHaan is another interesting name who I think could give the Canucks some more insurance on the blue line. Because as of right now, defense is probably an area they could improve on. Especially if they want to take their team to the next level and be that much more competitive. Interestingly, Dahan's name has been rumored to be linked to the Canucks earlier in August. And as a YouTube outsider, I'm not 100% certain that these rumors are legit. However, I feel like a player like Calvin Dahan could be a good fit on the Canucks blue line. Especially if they can get him at a good price. Because Dehan was quietly actually a pretty steady depth defender for the Islanders early on in his career. He actually had a pretty good run on Long Island and was one of their core defenders for a minute. He's also a left hand shot who can play on the right side as well which I think is a huge huge bonus. As I feel like he's capable of being that low end number 4 guy on the Canucks current blue line right now. Although I must say he's not exactly an offensive defenseman but rather a more defensive oriented player who is quite experienced with over 500 NHL games and most importantly he's not afraid to get physical which is another element I feel like the Canucks could add to their current blue line. He finished off last season in Chicago and in 69 games he scored 4 goals along with 8 points while averaging close to 19 minutes a night. And yes you might notice that he was a minus 21. But to be fair, he played for the Blackhawks. And let's be honest, they have been a mess for quite a few years now. So I feel like if you put a player like Dehan or any Blackhawks for that matter in a better situation like Vancouver, he can still thrive and be a solid NHL defender. As I said before, I could see him slide in as the second pairing guy or even be paired with a guy like Quinn Hughes to give the Canucks blue line a little bit more stability. 
Better yet, if push comes to shove, I think he could be a very solid bottom pairing guy as well. Now, to me, the biggest question about Calvin DeHaan is his age as he's 31 and also what type of term he wants for his next contract. Because if I were him, at his age, I might be looking for one last big payday. So I'm not sure if the Canucks are willing to pay that or how things will play out for him later on in this offseason. But if you were Patrick Alvin and friends, would you consider going after a guy like DeHaan? And if so, what type of contract would you offer him? Also, do you think he would be a good fit on the blue line this year? Or would you rather see the Canucks give someone else an opportunity to take that spot heading into the 2022-23 NHL season? Let me know in the comments below. Anyways, moving on, Dollywall also brought up another interesting point about JT Miller on the Sakaris and Price show. And yes, I'm talking about JT Miller, but for the purpose of this video, I'm not going to deep dive into the trade topic and make this another trade rumor video or another possible JT Miller landing spot video. Since you have probably heard and seen enough of JT Miller trade rumor videos online already over the past few weeks or even months, and to be quite honest, I kind of feel sorry for Miller, as he probably has no choice now but to stay off social media, especially if he does not want to see his name come up online every other day about where he'll be traded to and for who. So for this particular video, I'm going to lay off on him a bit here. <laughs> Anyways, on the Sakaris and Price show, to paraphrase what Dollywell said, he believes that the Nazem Kadri's new contract is probably not good news for the Canucks, especially if they're planning to resign JT Miller. Because in case you missed it, uh, Kadri signed a seven-year deal worth seven million per year with the Calgary Flames earlier this month. And comparatively speaking, Dollywell actually makes a pretty good argument that Miller is the younger player three years to be exact and based on his stats and how he has performed recently in the NHL he could possibly demand more money than Kadri in his future extension as he's very likely to sign a long-term eight-year deal. He actually suggests that Mika Sabinajad of the New York Rangers might be a comparable player and for reference he comes in at an 8.5 million AAV so that's definitely a pretty penny and I'm not sure if the Canucks are willing to pay that or if they have the cap space too because as we all know they have other priorities and extensions in the future. Future. So in many ways, I kind of agree with all these points because JT Miller was a 30 goal and a 99 point player and comparatively speaking, Miller is probably the more superior offensive player out of the two and if he has another big year for the Canucks this year, then he can very likely demand more than 7 million. Also to add to that point, I could be completely wrong here, but the closer we near the new NHL season, I honestly have a hard time seeing the Canucks try to trade JT Miller. Because honestly, why would you trade your best scoring center from last season before the year starts? To me, it would be equivalent to something like shooting yourself in the foot or stacking the odds against your team and not give them a chance to succeed right out of the gate. As many would agree that having Miller on this team helps them win more games than not. So with that in mind, uh, you have Dollywell and his assumptions are right, then do you think Patrick Alvin and the Vancouver Canucks should still try to extend JT Miller? If so, what would be your max length or price point? Also, do you think it's worth it to give JT Miller Mika Shabinajad money? If not, when do you think the Canucks should try to move on from Miller? Let me know in the comments below. Do you agree or disagree with everything I said in this video? Make sure you let me know in the comments below. And if you like, feel free to call me out as well. If you want to watch more of my crappy videos, then make sure you click the links on the side right here.